Thinking about going solar, solar is complicated and it's easy to take a wrong decision that could cost you thousands. Here are 17 things you need to know before you embark on your solar journey. One and two are power and size. Residential solar panels pack a punch in both power and size. Most panels on the market range from 400 to 470 watts and stand about six to seven feet tall and around three and a half feet wide. They're typically about an inch and a half thick with a corrosion resistant aluminum frame and a tempered glass frame on top. Now, don't get fooled by 600 or 700 watt panels or even bifacial panels. The 400 to 470 watt residential solar panels are at the bleeding edge of solar panel tech. They are the highest efficiency and produce the most energy while occupying the least amount of space on your roof. Those big 600 watt or higher panels and even the bifacial panels are much bigger in size than residential panels. They're used in large commercial installs. They're really unsuitable for rooftop installs that require maximizing energy output from limited roof areas. Number three and four, weight and roof requirements. Now inside your panels, you're gonna find silicon cells responsible for converting sunlight into direct current. Now these cells are shielded by tempered glass making these panels very lightweight, less than 60 pounds. And then their weight is distributed across the panel surface. This means that the minimum pressure on your roof is really equivalent to a small child walking on it. So concerns about roof stress or damage from solar panels are really unfounded. There is no structural load to worry about. Solar panels can be installed on regular shingled roofs, metal roofs, clay tiles, concrete, tiles, flat roofs, and most other roof types. It's always best to install on a roof that has at least another 15 years of life. If you're not sure, it's better to install a new roof along with solar. I can help with that. You can even get a 30% tax credit on both your roof and solar, thus reducing your project costs substantially. Five and six, weather and insurance. Now, solar panels are built tough to handle really tough conditions like hail, wind, storms, and heavy snow. They're reliable even in hurricane, hurricane force winds or even other 30 inches of snow. Not that they make power at that time. All the top tier solar panels are backed by a 25 year warranty. This covers any production or workmanship related defects. In most states, it's easy to add your solar panels to your homeowner's insurance at no or very little cost. That covers your solar panels from storm and weather related damage, which is not really something the manufacturers can help you with. Seven and eight, racking and flashing and roof leaks. Now when installed on your roof, solar panels sit on a racking system and that res resembles a railway track. They're securely fastened onto your roof's rafters with engineered steel flashings three layers of vacuum sealing. Professionally installed solar, stars, solar panels would not leak during the lifetime of the solar installation. The solar installation regularly outlasts roofs. Nine and 10 is a rapid shutdown and when to buy batteries. Behind each panel, you find either a microinverter or optimizer. Alternatively, every second or third panel could have a rapid shutdown device. Now, all these three devices, one of the crucial purposes is shutting down the solar production instantly when there is a power outage. This really is a safety measure required by law to prevent solar energy or electricity feeding back into the grid during a power outage but endanger utility workers when they are out working. So the only way your solar panels will work during an outage is to pair them with a battery like an Enphase 5P or a Tesla to get them working in an outage. Batteries are really not required for regular solar installs. Look at adding batteries if you want backup power during a power outage. Of course, some states like California have changed the rules on solar output and there you must buy your solar panels with batteries 
that this applies to a couple more states too. 11 and 12 is roof conduits and the site survey. Now, in most solar installations, panels are spread across multiple sections of the roof, each called an array. All the array's output is channeled through the attic to avoid unsightly conduit runs on the roof. Now, when an attic run is not possible, work with your install, and this is important, to run the conduits discreetly. Without your inputs, most installers will take the shortest, ugliest route possible. Now, the combined output from the panels then heads either to a sub-panel or to one or more inverters that are located on the exterior wall or inside your garage or basement. Make sure you discuss the locations and your conduit requirements during the site survey. 13 and 14, solar electricity versus regular electricity. Solar panels convert sunlight into DC current, which is then transformed into AC current for use in our households. This conversion happens in two main ways. My preference is using microinverters under each panel for individual conversions at panel levels. Alternatively, you can channel the DC current from your roof arrays to a central inverter in your garage or exterior wall. The electrical energy generated by your panels first powers your home, offering a choice between solar and utility electricity. Now, due to the slightly higher voltage, your home prioritizes solar power over utility power. As a result, your home first uses up solar electricity and only uses grid electricity when solar power is not sufficient. 15 and 16, excess energy and net metering. During the day, panels often produce more energy than your home needs. Excess energy flows back to the grid, where most U.S. utilities credit you fully for this electricity. You can tap into this stored solar energy whenever you need it. Essentially, you're using your electric company as your backup battery. Now, a well-designed solar system generates enough energy to cover nights, winters, inclement weather, always ensuring your home has reliable electric supply. This one-to-one -one credit for exported electricity is known as net metering. Unfortunately, some states like California and now even North Carolina are scaling back net metering. Instead of giving you full credit for exported electricity, California, for example, gives you only 20% credit, leaving homeowners with significant electricity bills even after going solar. Number 17, making sure you have zero electric bills. Now, a well-designed solar system can nearly eliminate your utility bills year-round. Depending on your state, you might end up with a monthly electric bill after solar as low as $5 or up to $30. In states without net metering, where the utility company doesn't provide full credit for exported electricity, you need to take control. And to avoid sending solar electricity back to the electric company, you need to pair your solar panels with a home battery, like the Tesla or the Enphase. This way, excess energy is stored in your battery in your home for your own use, and you have personal backup as a power source. That's it, folks. For more insights, you might want to check out my video on how solar panels save you money. Alternatively, you can explore my video on the different ways to go solar, whether through a solar power purchase agreement, purchase, or financing.